Hello and welcome to this short tutorial. Today we're going to look at creating this painted effect onto a surface in Photoshop. So we're going to do this using a displacement map. So we're going to create a displacement map for this uh, picture. And then we're going to use that displacement map to integrate this text to make it look like that it's been painted onto the wood. So this is what it looks like when it's completed. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that you want to do is to create the displacement map. So a displacement map is uh, you're creating a black and white image and that is to tell Photoshop the quality of the surface and that uses the black and white images uses gray uh, light and dark tones in order to tell Photoshop the direction the surface goes to and how to map the text or if you, you can put a logo on some, some type of image but how to map that on to the surface accurately so it looks like it's integrated with it. So we go ahead and we create the texture map. The first thing we need to do is turn it into a black and white image. So for that we can go to image mode and we can just go to grayscale and discard because we don't need the color information and we can just click discard. Okay and then we just want to increase the contrast a little bit. Uh, so that will just uh, help Photoshop a little bit with the mapping. So in order to do that we can either go to just do it, uh, it doesn't have to be non-destructive so we can go to the adjustments menu and go straight to the, the brightness contrast and we can try and do it that way and see if that creates a, an effect. This image is quite dark so what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to go to image adjustments and I'm going to use a curves because you see most of the, the tonal data is here in the darker areas because the wood is 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 quite a darker shade of wood. So we're gonna just use that this curve to increase the contrast. That looks okay. And then if we look at it hundred percent, it's quite hard. So this would create quite a hard looking uh displacement map. So it's always a good idea to slightly blur your displacement map. So to do that we're going to go to uh, the filter menu and then blur and Gaussian blur and just add a small amount of blur. And the amount of blur you add will depend on the size of the image. This is too much so uh, one or somewhere between one and two for this one should be okay. About one and a half I'm going to add and click on OK. Now I need to save this as a PSD, a Photoshop file type. So I go to file save as uh, and I'm going to call it uh, with the same file name just so I know and with a Photoshop extension so now that's been saved as a displacement map and we can go back to our original image so I can just come to our history here and just go back to here. So the image as it was when we opened it. So now we're just going to add the text. Of course, it doesn't necessarily have to be text. You can add also, uh, if you wish to, you can also add uh, a logo or if you want to add a logo or you could add something else to it. But we're just going to use text. Uh, so I, Enable the text tool and then I just write all over my area and I write just very originally something like this and I'm going to choose my font. So if you have a, a, a custom font that looks a bit painterly, uh, of course, go ahead and, and use that. Maybe we can use something like this. I'm going to just need to increase the size of that a little bit. Okay, that's great. Uh, and then we need to make sure that it's going to be white for this. So we want it to be white because that's going to be the kind of the basis for our, our using the blending, uh, uh, the blending options to, to blend it. So I'm going to accept that and then we can go to the move tool which is V on the keyboard and we can put that into place where we want it to, where we want it to be. Okay, so Next of all, then we have to create the displacement map for this. So before we 
use the displace map because it's through the filter menu and we want it to be non-destructive so we're going to convert for smart filters and this will ensure that the displacement adjustment will be a non-destructive adjustment and you can see now this little icon over the layer indicates it's a it's it's a smart object so now we can go back to our filter menu distort and displace the default settings are normally good to start with so we'll use those i'm going to click on ok and then we'll be prompted for our displace map file that we created earlier which we can see is here just make sure that's the right one yeah three two so it's we have a few different ones there three it's three yeah this one here so we select that and i click on open and it does my filter and that's integrated quite quite nicely now with the wood the wood's quite textured so that looks good so now we still need to do a little bit more work on it obviously to get it integrated a little bit better so the next thing i want to do is, is use our blend options so if i double click here and we get our blending options and we want to use these then to to just help it blend a little bit better with with the uh the wood in behind so i zoom in just so i can see what's happening so for this we use the blend if options so we can use these by dragging them to the, the right to blend it with with the wood behind so you see the underlying layer we drag this it starts showing through a little bit better but uh, this is quite harsh so what we need to do is, is we need to split this pointer and you can do that by holding the alt key on the keyboard and then just dragging and it splits so, so this just ensures that it goes a little bit more smoothly so you can see now that this is this blend if is making sure that the wood is getting uh, or the, the the text is getting nicely integrated with the wood in a smooth way so we can put that at about 90 looks good i think uh, if you also want you can try different uh, blending modes uh, screen overlay i think if we do screen i'm not sure that there's so much of a difference between screen and a uh, normal but of course you can check it if we go to the history and go you know from this to this or we go from normal here to the screen we see only a minor minor difference if we check the history it's very subtle and not, not really any any difference at all but now we have this integrated nicely so i zoom into 100 percent, which it is at now we can see that looks quite good it's following the texture of the wood and now you can also see the texture of the wood through the through the through this uh, uh, kind of paint or through, through this text we might just want to try and integrate it a, a little bit better if i uh, so you can take the white slider if you want and split that off and see if that helps it a little bit better we can also move this half of the slider so because we have a little problem here where it's still running part of the text is still running over the black areas which really wouldn't happen so we can kind of clean that up a little bit if we drag this slightly over so about 25 i think is good yeah that's good i think we've yeah we've got that nice and clear now where those gaps are And of course you can also look at uh, a bevel emboss so if you want to this is quite harsh at the moment because the depth is quite high but if you if you want to add uh, a little bevel to it uh, you can so maybe you want to add one where it's going up uh, on the outside slightly So it's also possible to do that in this case i don't think we need any bevel emboss to improve this this uh text 
So yeah, so the next thing then is, is because of course, if this was actually on the surface, the edges probably are a little bit too kind of hard to make it look realistic. So we can add a tiny little bit of blur. So if we go back to our filter menu and we go to blur, and then we go to Gaussian blur again, and we can add a, a, a tiny bit of blur to the little area. It only needs a small amount, even one should be enough. So if we turn it on and off, that looks already much more realistic, that it gives it a softer edge. And then of course, we chose white at the beginning. The reason we had to choose white was to get this text to integrate well with the, the wood, with the blend if options. What we can do then if we, we don't want to use this color, we want to change the color of the text, or if it's, you've got a logo and you have a specific color that you like to use with the logo, you can come down here to your uh, adjustment layer options and choose solid color. You can click, okay, to click the color you want. So maybe we want some type of, of blue color. Okay, and then I just create a clipping mask from this. So go to layer and create clipping mask or alt control G. And then that will be clipped to the layer below, which is, of course, is the text. And of course, you can come back in here because it's an adjustment layer and you can tweak the color if you're not happy with, with the blue of the color. Or if you want to use another color, you can also, you can also do that. Okay, so so that's it. So we just used a uh, text layer with a displacement map, and we used the blend if options in order to blend it with the image behind. Then we used a blur to integrate it a little bit better with the with the background, and we used this solid color fill layer to then change the color of the text. And as we mentioned, we needed to use solid color layer because we needed the text to be white in order to be successful with our blend if options. So that's it. Thank you for watching.